live from the Infinity Studios here in Los Angeles after the LA Sparks took care of business 87 to 80 against the Indiana Fever. We're live here with the LA Sparks weekly post game show. Myself, Fredo Cervantes, and I got here DJ Tracy Trishaw. And of course, Michael Matthew here as we're happy to discuss yes. another yes. victory. Back to back wins for the Sparks. Uh, playing some good basketball these last two games yep. to finish out the games at least. So now, you know, they kind of get some momentum going. Uh, defeating a young team in the Indiana Fever for the third time in what, Sweet. like two weeks? Yeah, Sweet. yeah. So three yeah. and zero. That's shout amazing. Out the, shout yeah. to the Sparks picking up this uh, big road victory, their fourth road victory of the season. Yeah, I also want to say, y'all, like the the Indiana Fever is one of the worst teams right now. So no, they are. while we're congratulating Not one of the ourselves, worst. the worst, <laughs> the worst. While but, we're congratulating ourselves, yeah. we wa- we also want to like congratulate the ladies on getting it done and oh, executing yeah. yes. on it. Mm-hmm. But it's like. We really need it. Yes. Because the signs of a uh, good team is beat the teams you're supposed to beat. There you go. So Mm they've beaten this team three times. You know, they got a nice victory over the Mystics the last game. Yep. So it was a nice win. Um, You know, we've been talking about it. It's about the wings stepping up and doing their thing, and they did exactly that. Um, Before I pass it to Fredo, make sure you guys tune in. Be on the lookout. We're going to have the uh, press conference from the coaches and players. So we're going to make sure that we take you to that when it's time. But Fredo, what's your thoughts on the ladies' performance tonight? I mean, just you, you got to look at I know we look at the same player every single game because she is the most consistent player throughout the year here in Neka Gumike. You know, oh, scoring yeah, 20 points tonight, 11 rebounds, recording her 98th Double double of her LA About Sparks to make another career. Another history. I mean, yeah. every day she's <laughs> like doing that. something new, so it's incredible for her. And you know, I was looking at some stats um, over the last few days and seeing that she's only scored uh, one game in single digits, only one game, which is wow. very impressive to see how yeah. consistent she is on the offensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's other players out there that have been very consistent lately, and Azari Stevens uh, playing yep. tremendous. And, of course, finally, Carly Samuelson, man. Yeah, I don't know if it's be- Yeah, I don't know if it's because she got a new niece because Katie Lou Samuelson just oh, had yeah. her baby yes. today, so yes. congratulations. Katie Lewis, congrats, Katie. Um, yeah, so, you know, a new addition to the family, so I don't know that gave her the little spark. Yeah, and you know what, Fredo, you said something – uh, very important there. You talked about other players on the Sparks uh, comparing them to NECA, but I want to take it to a league yes. standpoint. The only other two players, y'all, that's playing as consistently as NECA, Agumake, is Asia Wilson and Brianna Stewart of mm-hmm. New York. But nobody is talking about NECA for the Alyssa. MVP. Why yeah. are we... How do, Isn't Alyssa, she averaging a triple-double? Is what? That, Alyssa for, Thomas? Yeah, I don't know for, what her... Uh, but We're we going to check on Alyssa. Yeah. She yeah. might be a close... I thought NECA was third. I thought she was close third on I that. I think because those are the top and three 10. teams. But NECA is doing... For what she's been having to play with on the court. <laughs> right. Necker she averaging like 20 points things. and like 9.8 rebounds, I think, or something like that. Unless yeah. I'm wrong and that, that needs to no, be. No, you're okay. not wrong there because she's, <laughs> she's been incredible. Close. She's yeah. close to that. But she's playing some really good basketball, and they need it. She started off this game a little, you know, inefficient. Uh, so that's why, you know. It was that's kinda, because Indiana knew that she, yeah. she was yeah. coming. Some struggle. But fourth quarter, like you said, um, Fredo, Man, Carly knocked, yes. knocked down a couple threes. Finally. Shout out to Jasmine. Yes. And, and <laughs> right. Miss, Miss Westbrook knocking down some that big three. shots, giving them some solid minutes in the fourth. I'm still weirded out by Coach Miller's um, his rotation because yeah. you'd be like, why are they playing this much in the fourth? But that's just what he does. All right. But speaking of Coach Miller, we're going to be taking you right to him. Uh, All right, Coach is going to say a few so words and then we'll open it up for George. questions. Second consecutive <clears throat> road win and second consecutive 30 point fourth quarter um, to pull out the road win uh, with a lineup that probably had not played a minute together um, prior to um, rolling them out together in the fourth quarter when we needed it. Lasia moved to the point, Jasmine Thomas came in, um, moved Carly to, to the four, Avina Westbrook, a hardship player for us, and then NECA. And can't be more proud of that group, uh, their their toughness down the stretch of making plays, um, as much on the offensive end as the defensive end. We just settled into a simple way to play in that fourth quarter and found a group that was gritty and tough, and you know, uh, found a way, found a way on the road. Matt, we'll go with you. Hey, coach! Congratulations on the win. Um, another game, another late fourth quarter run there. I think this was twenty-two to nine. The last six minutes, if I have that right. What was the turning point here? Was it better shooting, the free throws, the converting on turnovers? What 
what worked for you guys there? Yeah, I, you know, it's not one thing, but I thought, again, that, that unit played with a grit and a determination, made some timely threes. Lasia is having us check if that's the most threes in a in singular game that she's ever had, so she's proud of that. Um, Avina made a big three. Jasmine made a big three. Carly got fouled on a three, so we were able to spread the floor a little bit more and, and get some stuff that we wanted. But um, at the defensive end, I felt like it was a group that was uh, just scrambling around and, and gave us a toughness. So, again, we, we lost some close games early in the year. Uh, we've talked about this before, some of those learning lessons, some of the failures that you let a late lead up, you learn from, grow from, and I think you're seeing it pay off that uh, there's, there's a more of a determination, there's more of a composure by this group, there's more of a uh, style that they want to play through and who to play through, um, and, and I thought we kept it, kept it pretty simple, it wasn't always perfect, but we kept it pretty simple and, and got to the finish line. Speak, uh, speaking of about turnovers, your team forced a ton of turnovers, um, but felt like it was difficult earlier on, or at least maybe in the first few quarters or even into the third, it was difficult to capitalize on them. Okay. Fourth quarter, different story. Would you say it's, it's that composure, it's that grit that really helped you guys start to capitalize on those turnovers? Yeah, you know, um, we had 11 turnovers at half. We talked about when we were turning them over, we had more shots on goal, we had more foul shots. Um, but you know it wasn't equating into us getting any separation on the scoreboard. They were shooting, if we weren't turning them over, they were shooting in the high 50 to almost 60% at times. So we talked about we've got to keep the disruption up and continue to convert off of the turnovers and, and disrupt them, but at the same time, could we get them to miss when we didn't have turnovers? And I thought we did a much better job in the second half Ultimately, their their field goal percentage def, uh, offense came back down into the mid 40s, and now combine our turnover um, turnovers that we were forcing with a lower shooting percentage in the first half, we had some success. The last time you saw Indiana, the last couple times, Melissa Smith wasn't playing. How different does this Fever team look with Smith out there, and the difficulty it was for you perhaps to try and scout for her in this game? Yeah, you know, it's been a while, so it's been a minute since Melissa's gone on the floor, but she's one of the, you know, talented players in this league. They, they're bigger and physical, um, certainly. So when you're scrambling around and you have mismatches, they're bigger. They're, you know, it, it's a tougher matchup late in the shot clock. Vivian's is a 3-4, um, a talented player, but is not as big. So you scramble around and all of a sudden the guard ends up on her. It's not as big of a matchup at the rim. So um, Nalissa, you know, provides a different size and different problems. But I thought we handled it, it, handled it well. And uh, again, our small lineup ultimately was the difference in the fourth quarter. Thanks, Coach. Rashawn, you're up and then Sabrina. Hey, Coach. Uh, Boston got off to a, a hot start, uh, 12 points in that first quarter. She finished with six the rest of the way. Uh, wh what did you see there? What, what, what type of uh, energy went, went towards that on the defensive end and be able to slow her down? Yeah, I thought uh, she had a terrific first quarter and got some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And ultimately, she's too talented um, leading this league in field goal percentage to, to find – that one-on-one -on -one, and we needed to get back to congestion, which we were so um, productive with in the two games back in LA, uh, showing her traffic. And so uh, we got to take a deep breath, talk about it. How can we get bodies around her? How can we keep her off the offensive glass? Um, and I thought there was a much more concerted effort. And then if you can speed up their guards and, and, and have them working so hard to make passes maybe out of traps or in rotation that maybe Boston can't just settle in and then they miss her at times when maybe she should get the ball. So I thought uh, overall the game plan came back together uh, after that big first quarter again. Uh, she's an unselfish rising star in this league. Um, in congestion, she'll give it up. And so uh, we were able to get her doubled and congested at times. And now she only takes eight shots in the game after that uh, outstanding first quarter to only have eight shots. We did a really good job on her.
and you applauded that lineup uh, late with, with Leja in there running the point. What did you see from her in particular to be able to get you in and out of things? Yeah, I thought she was good in the middle ball, uh, middle third of the floor. I thought she was good in middle ball screen, not over penetrating, not doing things that she wasn't capable of and and moving the ball, you know, to Carly, to NECA. She found second levels. I just thought she commanded the middle of the floor. Um, she was playing against a rookie at times guarding her. Um, that is a, a, a tough physical defender, but they didn't send any double excuse me, they didn't send any doubles or anything to her. So she could just play at the tempo that Lay has so much success with. Thanks, Coach. Safe travels. Thank you. Sabrina? Uh, Kurt, you've kind of alluded to this already, but, I mean, you mentioned that that lineup in the fourth hadn't played together at all. I don't think you guys really ever play small that much at all. So I guess just what sort of inspired that and what did you really see from Avina these last few days that made you want to get her in there? Yeah, Vina's given us a spark with her physicality um, and, you know, her athleticism. Um, you know, she has a composure that she belongs in this league and, and has a confidence that she can go out there. Um, you know, made a big three for us. But, you know, she's just a little bit stronger, athletic, someone that can help us defend, maybe get a loose ball and, and, and a rebound. But, I, I, you know, I thought, um, you know, Derek and Azare have been great, but we needed something different tonight, a different look. Um, we were having trouble getting to the paint, and so we were going to have to make some outside shots. I thought Carly could naturally, with her presence, open things up, not only for herself but others because she draws so much attention. So doing that at the four position, we rolled the dice while, you know, a tough matchup for Garley, Carly to guard some of their post players. Uh, we thought it would be hard for them to guard and it would give us better spacing. And, you know, the chess match won tonight. It doesn't always win, uh, but we felt like we pushed some right buttons to Sabrina tonight. Thanks. Thank you. And last question from Infanity Studios. Coach, uh, Michael here. Uh, man, when you look at some of the raw numbers, you're like, man, how did, how did the Sparks come out with this victory? But then you go to the free throw advantage. You guys were able to get to the line for 24 shots and not only getting to the line, but knocking them down. How important was that to you guys tonight in this victory? And was that the game plan to be very aggressive attacking the rim uh, to get to the free throw line? Yeah, we talk about two teams that live in the paint. Percentage of points come in the paint. We want to play inside out. Um, you know, they do also. Um, and you know, for us to come away with a win with Indiana had a better night in the paint uh, just shows how important the foul line was. And again, a little skewed at the end because they had to foul uh, for clock management, but also um, our points off of turnovers. That, that was the difference in the game. Uh, we didn't shoot as well as them. We got out rebounded, uh, but we were able to turn them over enough and capitalize off their turnovers, a big story of the game. Thank you. Thank you. Great players will be here in just. All right, guys. Well, that was uh, pretty interesting, of course. You know, that was Coach Kurt Miller talking to the media right after a great victory, 87 to 80. And they are on the two game winning streak, guys. Yeah, the championship. You know what I thought about uh, the. Figueroa. What, 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 <laughs> Coach talked about Avina's athleticism, and that yeah. immediately yeah. made me think of Ray Burrell. We mm. are looking at Ray's Recording numbers. Stopped. Ray played. Did she played today. She played one, one minute. minute. He wow. clearly has issues with, with Ray, and, you know. Hey, sometimes she has that same build. Sometimes but coaches and Ray is actually bigger than uh, you know. Avina, Avina. yeah. But you know, um, it was good to see Coach step out of the box yep. and go to a small lineup. Uh, shout out to Sabrina Merchant on the on there where she brought that up. Like you don't really do that, and he did it because he like maybe I need to throw a, you know a little curveball to throw them off, and it worked having yep. Jasmine and Avina, uh, Carly, Neca. And Lasia running a one. Yeah, uh, I think we need to see more of Lasia running a one. Honestly, I think that she can give some minutes 
to you know allow Jordan to rest or even to allow Jordan to play off the ball to shoot so, yeah, yeah to come off the screen so I think yeah. we need to see more of Lazier being on the ball allowing Jordan to get that rest and being able to do stuff away from the ball how great is it to just have Lazier back because no, yeah. you know she was gone for almost mm-hmm. four or five weeks or so yeah, and yep. that was a time that the Sparks really struggled there was no and especially without with the absence of Lexi Brown, Brown as well yeah. so that point guard situation was Canada playing 35 to 40 minutes every night mm-hmm. even though she was doing her thing you know, yeah. 21, continue doing your thing. But, you know, finally being able to get Lasia back, you know, we did have a, uh, well, you know, you had a one-on-one interview with her a few yeah. weeks ago mm-hmm. over at Crypto. So, yeah. um, you know, that was amazing as well. But what did you, what else did you, what was, what was going on in this game? Because we kind of thought this game was going to get away from them. It seemed like it. Yeah. I knew that they were going to win. I knew that it was going to be a struggle, and I knew we were going to wait to the fourth quarter to do it because we've done that this whole season, y'all. It we happens have all played the time, though. around. The we just drag it in, and then we mm-hmm. have stupid fouls or turn- turnovers. But like Coach said, tonight – we had some things that were working in our advantage. Indiana was turning over the ball mm-hmm. like crazy. We got some some extra fouls. Yep. We shot extremely well on mm-hmm. those. So the game really was a toss up. It could have went either way. But the energy and I think the 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 little things as well. Yeah, and shout out to the Sparks um knocking down their free throws, you know. <sighs> they made Man. 21 of 24 compared to Indiana who didn't really miss many at 4 14 yeah. for 17, but late in the game they were stepping up to the free throw line, knocking them down. They were being aggressive earlier in the game to get to the free throw line. So, you know, you like to see that from the team, being aggressive, getting downhill. Yep. Because I think that opens up for the shooting. They made eight of 19 three-point shots. Like yeah. I was going to mention that to Coach, but I know he doesn't like the three-point shot too much. <laughs> eight. That, that's, a, that's, that's a lot a for that team. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a pretty a good number. For yeah. So for them to – and most of those came in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, with uh, Vina knocking down the shot. Uh, Carly knocking down a couple, and then Jasmine knocking down some. Yep. But it's just one of those wins. I figured that they will find a way to win. Yeah, they're a veteran team compared to a younger Indiana team. So a lot of times you expect a young team to fold compared to a vet- yeah. veteran uh, team. But man, once Indiana went up seven in the fourth, I'm like, man, this is going to be tough. But this team the entire year has kept their composure. Yep, and they, you know, and that's what they showed today in this game. Yeah. Shout out to them because. I looked up the stat, Fredo. Remember we said we we're going to bring it up last yeah. week? They have lost uh, seven <laughs> games. We're going to start with Lasia. Recording in uh, NECA's on her way. Lasia had a season high of 17 points tonight. Also had five assists. Let's, let's, let's so, Matt, let's start with you in the room here. Okay. Hey, we'll start with you know, uh, five assists, the 17 points. Um, again, congratulations to you. What was you. working so well for you? What were you seeing that was just making you so successful? Just staying, you know, shot ready, staying aggressive, um, yeah, being ready to score, being ready to shoot. Like, shooting's fun. I'm typically more of a driver a lot of my career, so spotting up and getting to shoot threes is like, this is cool. I should do this sooner. And was this the career high for threes for you? I think. I don't know. Coach was saying you were looking, you were going to push him to look into it? Yeah, I was like joking because I know I'm not usually, I don't usually shoot a ton of threes. <laughs> I think I made threes, so I was like, that might be a career high and made threes. So okay. just having fun with it. Um, Coach was just talking about the lineup that that was switched into. You running point with Carly, with Avina, with uh, Jasmine and Neca. Talking about wanting to go small, wanting a different, something different because it was difficult for you guys to get to the paint. But it was interesting because you had never lined up in, in that formation before together. What was it that allowed you guys to, be, to gel so well together? I mean, the team went on a 22-9 run the last six minutes, something along those lines that just really propelled you to win the, this win. What was working in that lineup together? Uh, some of it was just toughness and grit, like it was the right lineup that just had the right scramble and the right fight and energy at that moment in time to, you know, get stops is what really helped us and then get out and get a chance to um, set up our offense and not have us on our heels. So that was one. And then, you know, putting Carly in ball screens where now Melissa has to guard her. You put a post with have to guard someone who's a little more mobile. So that was another good matchup side for us. And then we just had to help Carly on the defensive end. So just a little bit of a chess match. And sometimes you do all those little pieces and then it works. So work tonight thank you congrats thank you. Rashawn let's go with you hey Lay. Uh, coach talked about uh, he, he was really complimentary of you commanding the middle of the floor uh, in, in the fourth quarter when you all made that run uh, that's something that that you've kind of done throughout your career w- what is it about just being there in the middle of the floor and, and just being able to command uh, that space there that, that you have found so effective you know throughout the course of your career um it's just experience like having been in those moments um 10 years in knowing you know time and score and fouls and how to 
slow the ball down, how to get people in the right positions and to get what you want. Because at that point you have an advantage in the game. So it's how you manage the game. And it's really funny. It's serendipitous that I see Lynn Dunn today. I talked to her before the game for like 15, 20 minutes. Um, That's the coach that I played for my rookie year. And the person who like just was so hard to play for, but she instilled so many of those things as a point guard in me really early in my career that helped prepare, propel me, I think, to be the point guard I am today. It's just like, again, time score, how many fouls do you have to give? What are you looking for? It was always my fault if something didn't go right. And um, those kind of lessons have really carried me a long way. And again, I'm a point guard naturally for nine years. So playing the three, two, three this year, it, it's still in there. It's like riding a bike, getting back and playing the one. Back-to-back games, 30 points <clears throat> in the fourth quarter as a team. Uh, and these, these come from behind wins. Uh, what, what does this say about maybe the growth of where the squad is right now? Just learning um, learning how to win down the stretch. Some of that is just chemistry, uh, learning how to play together. Finally now, just, just literally chemistry and time and playing together. Um, I think that's been the biggest thing we've seen is just learning how to gel, learning what lineups work down the stretch, learning – where someone likes a pass, the amount of turnovers, you know, Derek and I have made, we always joke to each other, like, we're going to learn, we're going to get it one day because it's just, we haven't played with each other before. So some of those things are just totally new. And then the confidence that we can win down the stretch, that takes time. You have to lose some of those games where you don't execute down the stretch to then learn how to, how to play slow down the stretch, how to command the floor, how to get what you want in the moment and not get sped up and play to the other teams. Um, I would say will. Thank you. Safe travels. Thank you. Let's go with uh, Infanity TV. Hey, ladies, DJ Tracy Trace, Infanity TV. Uh, quick question. Finding the energy to win down the stretch in Indiana, can you talk about the team's uh, energy or well, the team strategy going into it pregame? And did you feel like you executed that uh, through the end of the game? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we had a lot of good stuff to reference after the two games at home. So, ensuring that we of course maintained our aggression on um kelsey and Aaliyah, like you know those are their two heavy hitters and and making sure that we made things difficult um for them to be able to get like buckets but um outside of that just like playing cohesive team defense especially like on the back side of our defense and in the same way doing it on offense i think that these last couple games we've been seeing um more movement um more people attacking and um, I guess a, a little bit of a less predictability when it comes to what we do on offense. And that clearly showed, especially with someone like Lay coming out tonight and um, having a great game, a very steady game and um, very efficient game. Um, this is Michael here with a second question. This is for you, Lasia. Uh If you're asked to, you know, be more of a scorer and put up more three-point shots, is that something that you are comfortable with? Are you know can get comfortable with if that's exactly what the team needs to be successful? Definitely, I'm shoot till my arm falls off. Yeah, <laughs> that would be you know. It still only took eight shots, which is funny. But yeah, it's you know um, taking those spot up shots, being aggressive off the ball. It's been a learning lesson for me to not play with the ball in my hands because I've done that for so much in my career. So learning how to still be aggressive when sometimes you're asked to just stand in the corner. That's the, that's what you do. Space the floor, stand in the corner, watch the play, but then be ready to score when it's your turn. So it's just kind of, I think learning for me, what am I maybe now 12, 13 games into this season with my injury of how to play off the ball, but, but manage my aggressiveness. Okay, thank you. FYI, your career high is four. For <laughs> uh, Matt, ahead, do you have a man. question for NECA, and I'll let Leisha go? Yeah, just one for NECA. Hey, NECA, how are you? All right, good, how are you? Fine, thanks. Um, congrats on the win. Thank you. Foremost. Uh, Coach and Leisha were just talking about um, the closing win with you, mm-hmm. Leisha running point, Avina, Jasmine, and Carly, talking about it was small but tough, gritty, um, changed up a little bit about what was going on on the court. Mm-hmm. Tough to get to the paint, but you guys have outside shooting now. Um, but also the fact that you had never really played together as a unit. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what allowed them to find some cohesiveness, play that toughness on both sides of the ball. Just curious your assessment of those things you agree with. What was working, do you think, that allowed you to gel so well? Yeah, you know, I think that um, that lineup at the end was just about who was going to go out there and fight, you know, giving that energy. And I think that we let that... Um, define how we finish the game rather than focusing so much on matchups. You know, obviously we had Carly down there, but Carly's fearless. 
and even against a, a Alyssa Smith, who is who is obviously um, a force to be reckoned with inside, she did what she could, and she she got stops the way she could, and we supported her in that way. Um, and you know, and likewise on the offensive end, uh, Lay coming down with great tempo and control, and us playing to kind of the rhythm of her beat, um, and ensuring that we're getting like good shots and finishing off plays, um, which ultimately led to some really good possessions at the end. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, that was Neko Gumake and Leisha Clarendon, who just talked to the media right now. But we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break, guys. Um, when we return, we're going to go ahead and give you some of our player of the games and our last-minute details in this big win for the LA Sparks 87-80 to over Indiana. We'll return. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. We are back. Your favorite post-game show, LA Sparks Weekly. We are here. I am Michael with DJ Tracy Treese and, of course, my guy Fredo. Yes, of sir. course, we are excited. We are talking about the big 87-80 to 80 victory for the Los Angeles Sparks in Indiana. Yep. Um, man, great finish. We just heard from uh, Lasia and Neca just talking about the will of yeah. this team to pull out a victory like this. Um, just how big do you think this is, uh, DJ, uh, going forward? For I think it's team? huge. I think that's the. I asked the question about was this the plan? What What were y'all planning for? Did you feel like you saw that plan through? And I think they answered the question pretty pretty clearly. They, you know, they knew that they needed to do whatever they could do. They knew that they needed to space the floor a little bit, not mm -hmm. let them get so many points in the paint, even mm -hmm. though Indiana did have a great game in the paint. They also kept guards like Erica Wheeler quiet. Yes. Zero true. points. So it's true. like, you know, wow. you have a huge player yeah. who usually got the ball in her hand. Yeah, and you, Last time I think they played, she had like 18 points. She went so, off. Yeah, she went so off. So it's like I taking did. one or two of those players off is what mm -hmm. Coach uh, Miller was talking about with playing chess in these situations. Situations and just kind of out strategy in them. So that's where I think they move forward with it. It's kind of reflecting having that game plan going into it and then executing it fearlessly. Yep. Yeah. Like what it. about you, Fred? I mean, you, you got to look at it. I guess we've been trying to figure out their identity over the last few weeks or so. It seems like maybe defense is defense of the thing now for them right now because the way they're playing defense we is still pretty, gonna see. We still it's pretty, see it's pretty good. No, it's Indiana pretty good. Indiana isn't a great offensive team, but, but we'll see. But yeah. it was important in order for them to really show out these teams, like the little mm -hmm. teams. I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, little them right yeah. now, but I'm like, these are the teams they really got to capitalize on. Mm -hmm. And just being able to see the way they won the game on Sunday afternoon, very big, uh, big time play. But also it was very important. Someone asked a question earlier and they mentioned how, the Sparks have scored over 30 points in the last two fourth quarters, yep. which is very good. It seems like they're they're not letting it go um, and get away from them late in the game. So they're able to close these games. I mean, NECA, you got to just give her credit. But, but is I mean, that good or are we waiting until the last minute? Are we lazy exactly playing? Like you're like... going to give your coach a headache, um, you know, every game. True, yeah. Uh, you know, so that's why, you know, you're hoping that they can figure out how to come out early. And we're still waiting for them to play in a, a complete game. I don't yeah. think they've played a complete all four quarters, good basketball game no. as of yeah. yet. 
But there's you know, at least one flop each game. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. quarter yeah. flop. Yeah, each one game quarter. You'd be like, what, what, what was that? A lot of times you know? it's been the second quarter. A no, lot of times. Right second before third, half time. Second or third yeah. quarters are the two quarters that they've struggled with. But, like, the last two games, they kind of kept it even and had big fourth quarters. So, uh, our last game, they gave up a big third quarter. I think it was, like, 28 to 17, 19. But wow. the fourth quarter was able to flip things their way. So, you know... Yeah. I love um, that you know they had Lazy there to speak because yeah. she did her thing today. Playing, she did ball, you know, scoring seventeen points. She's Ball-up. my player of the game because she was a big difference, making three threes. She was three for three, um, and that's why I asked her in the post game. Like, it looks like the team is going to need more from her. <laughs> like, you have to do more. You gonna have to play some point guard, like she said. Is she's used to, and she's gonna have to score more because yeah. they don't have Lexi Brown. So I, I'm going to be watching to yeah. see if she's going to stay aggressive and if Coach Miller is telling her, put them up. If you open shoot, yeah. if you open shoot, look for yourself first because a lot of times she's looking, even when she catches open, she's looking to make a play for somebody else to where right. that's not your role on this team. On this team, yep. Jordan Canada, who had, I believe, seven or eight assists yep. this game, like that's her job. So your job is to get them up, and when we need you to be – the secondary ball handler when Jordan is not in there, then play make. So shout out to Lasia. Yep. But let's see if she can keep it up as far as staying aggressive and scoring uh, big points like she did with 17 tonight. Yeah. Woo. Who your player of the game? Friday? I mean, I, I know we got to – I think we got to hit the same one again. I mean, Lasia Clarendon, just okay. seeing how great she has been and the, imp- the importance of her role – because, yeah, like you said, whether is she going to play make or is she going to be aggressive off the ball? Yep. Or like she even mentioned during the press conference, like, hey, when I'm asked to stick in the corner, I'll stick in the corner and I'll let that thing rip. Yeah. And she said she's going to let it rip until her arm falls down. Yeah. So hopefully, <laughs> I mean, if she lets it rip, her arm falls down, I'll go pick it up and maybe sell it on Craigslist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> eBay, nah, <laughs> on eBay, yeah, you might get more money there. Uh, but, yeah, she, she's she been doing amazing 17 points from her. Um, that's pretty high for her. Of course, she's normally between the 10 to 13 range or so. Yeah. But those extra shots, shoot. You know, with confidence, that's what makes her the player of the game. Yeah. yeah. And for me, I'm going to go with Lazer, but for a different reason. Okay. We have needed a strong player defensively in transition okay. to come through and shake things up. And I really mm-hmm. think Lazer stepped up there mm-hmm. because people were, weren't trying her. They were, you know, she was catching passes, deflecting passes that way, you know, but also just being disruptive. We've needed a player like that to run mm-hmm. the floor and mm-hmm. be fast and quick in transition and then take that thing on the other side and score. So Lazer really stepped up today on that side. So y'all for the offense, I'm for the defense, but no, all yeah. around is shout out to Lazy. Yeah, the, the trifecta player, right player there. Player of the game. Um but it's going to be interesting going forward because we talked about it almost the entire season, you know, especially last uh episode is that it's going this going to come down. If they want to make the playoffs and give up one of those top teams a scare, it's going to come down to the wing players. Yep. It's going to come down to Lazy <laughs> Jordan, Carly, Zaya Cook, who we had didn't mention who, you know, kind of had 15 a, a points tough today. Game. Two for eight. Five points. Five points. Yeah, five points. Yeah. So her last two games, she's been playing well. So yes. she's a rookie. She's gonna have those up and downs. Uh, but it's gonna come down to Jasmine, all of the wing players. So you're yeah. happy to see these last two games. They actually have stepped up and played well. So let's see what they're going to do, you know, going forward with this next game, especially in a tough matchup against Atlanta. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's that, that's going to be tough, and, but that is a home game, so it's going to be a good yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a night game, so it's not an afternoon game, because I do feel at times, do so you guys feel that as well, that, you know, whether it's afternoon games, 12 o'clock, 1, one o'clock yeah, games, the Sparks kind of start up. A, yeah, yeah. It, it's a little slow, and they even talk about it. Hey, we have no shoot-around. Hopefully, this Saturday, they do have a shoot-around, because I believe the tip-off is 4.30 Pacific time here in Los Angeles. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the dream. We got some quick predictions on what, who we are looking out for. So, I know that they're on tour against the dream. I pulled up the so the first game uh July 2nd they lost 112-84. Wow. They got smacked. Necker had a big game. <laughs> and then the following game was in LA on Wednesday uh yep. July 5th and they lost 90 to 79. So both game versus the Dreams they lost by more than 10 points. So it's going to be tough because the Dream as we remember being at the Ryan game Howard, they get that thing up and down the floor Alicia, and they're trying to get buckets. Yeah. So Alicia we're going to really see offensively what the Sparks can do. Then defensively, of course, because can they get the stops that they need to? But I think that the Dream, they force anybody to have to put up buckets. So let's see if they can do exactly that uh, on Saturday morning. I think Saturday is a battle of the coaches, y'all. I think it's going to be Tanisha against Kurt. 
That's what's going to end up happening because it's going to be who can better position their players because, to be honest, the Sparks, uh, they don't really have a shooter like they got in, uh, I think, Owens or Alicia. Alicia is her first name. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, the girl with the, the goggles. Yeah, okay, we don't call goggles, her goggles. Hooper. She could she just catch and shoot. So we don't have a player that's comparable there because we don't have Lexi Brown, but it's all about the chess of – who is matched up with who? What is the defensive play there? And if we can catch up uh, to the pace that they play, it's going to yeah, be about it, coaching. It's going to be, man, I, I'm excited to see it, what they learn because now it's been more than a month since they played them last. Because the yeah, first mm-hmm. game they got blown out, 112-84. Then the second game they made it much tougher, just dream made free throws at the end of the game to, to like put the game away. So it's going to be interesting to see what they learned from those games just like Neca said tonight, hey, we've seen Indiana, you know, it's our third time seeing them. We were able to learn to, you you know, utilize what so we learned sweep to them. win. So Swept. now you don't want to get swept by Atlanta. You want to keep this winning streak going. So, you know, it's going to be big uh, for the team because if they can pull out that victory, yeah, three straight, be the high explosive offensive team, I know the confidence is going to be crazy for the ladies and, you know, just looking at how they how they play, the names, the talent. You like if you can finally get a, a healthy Lexi Brown. Yep. And she can get close oh to, my to we where are, she was. We need to stop this talking Sparks, about that. No, I know. <laughs> it ain't happening. But eventually, she you ain't know, coming back. Chanae ain't coming back. That's just how. What, are y'all impartial to that? Or you, what you Well, mean? I mean, it was interesting. I think Coach mentioned it the last game we were in the arena about a week ago that she will come back. Of course, she he she he just mentioned he's like, well, she she's getting better. Um, mm-hmm. So not really much of an update, but it seems that like LA should be getting her back. But looking at the way they're playing right now, and like, you, where you you add yeah. on Lexi Brown to this lineup, it's gonna make this pretty hard to stop. If you see the He's way they competed, more depth. he can play yeah. more. Yeah, players. I you mean, don't have to let the. Hardship player go, but that's okay. Yeah, but yeah, you got Lexi Brown. Yeah, it's a yeah, second, a yeah. Good, you got, <laughs> I mean, you got Lexi Brown. Like who? And, you know, no, no disrespect to Avina Westbrook either. Yeah, of course. no, you should uh, have the victory, you know. Yeah, she was out there balling too, so, you and know, on her defense. second, um, yeah, this is her second 10-day uh, contract she's had, uh, Hardship, so she's in the middle so right now. So, last time they played Atlanta, it, I remember, and I'm looking at it now, now I really remember, is the dream came out really fast. They yeah. They up 29-16. And the game was just even keel from there. The Sparks actually uh, tied them in the second and third and won the fourth quarter. So it's going to really, that first quarter is going to be very important that the Sparks can come out and try to match their firepower because the Dream are going to try to attack early. Yeah, uh, Howard. Didn't she have forty the first time? Ryan Howard, wow. unstoppable. That was yeah. that game. She crazy. Yeah, I remember. Game I remember before, that the game before in yeah. Atlanta. Oh I'm telling you, it's that coach. It ain't. I mean, them girls can play basketball, mm-hmm. but it's that it's coach. Up, up she the, the coach. coach of the month right now. She going if if we get outplayed on Saturday, it's because she out strategized Coach Miller. Well, again, talking about Coach Miller, congratulations to him for picking up his 151st victory of his career. That's it's, right. it's impressive. That's Shout amazing. Out coach. And Shout the, out, Coach. Even with the win, uh, the Sparks are still two games behind the sky. So not all bad, these, not bad. All we of got these games are important going forward. So yes, let's get dubs, ladies. You're, y'all need it on Saturday. Yes, but uh, man, we thank you so much for tuning yes. in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that victory, seeing the Sparks defeat the Indiana Fever, 8780. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed us, your favorite post-game show with myself, uh, DJ Treacy Treese, and my guy Fredo. We will catch you guys Saturday. We're going to be in the building, Woo! Crypto.com yes. Arena. If you are there, come show us some love. That's right. We would love to talk to you and meet you and talk some Sparks yes, basketball. Sir. We'll catch you guys next time, baby. Deuce. Peace.